igniting community, a safe space to learn, share, and grow. Don't forget to like and subscribe below. Hi there, Ignite and community. My name is Nancy. I am the Belly Love Coach, and I'm here to talk to you today about fasting. Now, fasting is not something that I recommend for everybody, and it is not an approach that um, you might be ready for. And so I'm, I want to share with you a fast I've done. So I've done a five-day fast. I'm going to explain to you in this video what the purpose of the fast was, what surprising things I've discovered about myself and about my relationship with food, and um, what my recommendations would be for you moving forward. So um, my intention with going on a five-day fast, it was a water fast, so that meant nothing but water and a sprinkle of sea salt, um, no teas, no supplements, no vitamins, nothing that would break my fast. So a fast, something that would break the fast would be something that would stimulate our digestive system to turn on. So anything with fats um, or sugars or protein, any supplements that had any of that stuff, it was a no-no. So I just want to make it clear that I did, my intention for this fast was out of love for my belly. It was not to look at myself in the mirror with shame and say, oh, I don't like the way you look and I want to fast so I can starve myself and get and lose some weight. Definitely did not want, want to drop any LBs. That was not the goal of the fast. I don't have pounds that I wanted to lose. Um, so the reason I wanted to go on it um, was to see if I could do something like that because I had a couple friends who were trying it, um, who have done it successfully a couple of times, um, but, and they did it for cleanse reasons to kind of serve as a reset. And it being the beginning of the new year, I thought, yeah, it's a good time for me to try something that I once previously thought was impossible. Because when they had done this, when my friends had done this like over a year ago, I thought that's crazy. I would never do anything like that. You know, up until last year, I've never even done a 24 hour fast. I know that sometimes people do those kinds of things for fundraisers or for spiritual reasons. I just thought there's no way I could go that long without food um, because I would get hangry and I'd be miserable and everyone around me would be miserable. And why do something like that when we have access to food? What is the point of that? Is that going to make, uh, you know, um, other people more full if I starve myself? No. So what's the point of that? Um, so I just always thought it was impossible. But um, there was a point last year that I went on a three-day fast. Um, but that was more like a juice cleanse. So I can't really call that a full, full fast. Um, so this time around, I wanted to see, number one, if I could do something like that. Because I know physiologically, we can go for two to three weeks without food. And some people can go even more if they have more fat stores and reserves in their body. Um, so I know physiologically, I wouldn't starve to death. I knew that I would be fine in that regard. Um, but I also learned more about fasting in that um, after three days, your body will start to go into a process called autophagy, autophagy. So auto means self, phagy means to eat. So we start to eat our cells. And before we thought fasting was bad because we would break down our own proteins. But actually, we and when we go through this process of autophagy, we're actually breaking down um, cells that are not serving us anymore. Cells like um, like weak muscle cells or overly sensitized autoimmune cells. So, you know, when you eat something and your body gets inflamed and you get bloated or you might have some swelling, um, so sometimes that's a result of just our body, body's alarm system being triggered by so many different things that it's just overly sensitized or overly sensitive. So when we go into this process of autophagy, if you are in a fast of three days or more, um, your body starts breaking down those cells. Um, so that's really the real reason I wanted to do it. It's kind of do this reset and see, see if, you know, how my body would improve, how my energy would improve. Um, and to see if I could even lose, I wasn't trying to, but just see what it would be like if, you know, I lost a bit of my love handles or my muffin top, which I love. Um, so 
I was completely shocked by how much I um, learned about myself and my relationship with food. So number one, it was a very big surprise that, you know, after six hours into the first day where I didn't eat, I was hungry. As I always tell myself stories, if I don't eat every four hours, then I won't be very full and I'll be hungry more frequently and I have to eat meat with every meal or else I won't be full. So these are the stories I've told myself or these are the conditions that food need to meet for my personal needs. Um, so by hour six, I was hungry, but I started to really look at it objectively. I looked at my belly as if it was outside of me instead of inside of me and I, and I could hear my belly start to rumble and it would say, hey, knock, knock, I'm hungry. And I would respond with, okay, I hear you. I hear that you're hungry. I acknowledge that you're hungry. And I would pat my belly or I would rub my belly and say, you're going to get food in five days. Or you're going to get food in four days or whenever I'm supposed to get food. And it was just a conversation. And it was a relationship that I had with my belly. And after day one, my stomach started stopped grumbling because it was like, I already told you I'm hungry. And if you're not going to hear me, then I'm not going to keep telling you. And the, the interesting thing about that is that um, it, it's sort of a relationship with pain. Maybe you can even look at hunger as a kind of pain. Um, so, you know, our body will tell us when it need, thinks it needs something. So it was telling me I was hungry, but I wasn't feeding it anything but water. And I thought I would be drinking tons of water to try to get that feeling of fullness but I didn't have that need. And everybody's different, but this is my experience of my fast. So um, I was not more hungry on day five of my fast than I was at the six hour point of day one. Isn't that crazy? I thought that I would be progressively more hungry every day and I'd become this wild, savage animal and would eat everything by day five. But actually what happened was my kids were supposed to go away to my parents' house so that I didn't have to cook for them because I did this with my husband. We agreed to fast together. And um, I thought that my parents would be able to watch my kids, but they didn't, which meant that I had to cook every meal for my kids in during the five-day fast. And on day four, they actually had some friends over and their parents came over and I made this meal for everybody. And I sat there and I cooked for everybody. I served everybody. I washed the dishes, which I enjoyed because I love giving. And I really appreciated that I looked at that food and said, huh, that looks good. But I didn't feel like, oh, my God, I need to eat. And this, you know, I think in, on some level, probably most women have this relationship with food of like, how much should we eat? How much should we not eat? And then when we starve ourselves, we kind of binge. And that's why I don't recommend going on a fast for people who haven't really conquered that relationship with food. And really, you know, to go off on a little side note, our relationship with food is so much more than our relationship with food. It's our relationship with our love, self-love. How much can we lean into abundance versus lack? And I really feel like with all my abundance training over the past couple of years, into knowing that I am enough and I have enough and I will always have enough. That's what really comforted me and got me through the five days because by day five, I really could have done seven days. And I think that could probably go longer because I said I wasn't any more hungry day five. Um, and so that feeling of I'm full, I'm so full with life. I have so much love for my family. I have so much love for my home, for my community and for people who don't like me or don't agree with me, I have love for them too. And because I felt so satiated in all the other areas of my life, I really do believe that's why I was able to do this fast so successfully. I mean, other people can do it, but I did it with so much love for myself and so much fullness that I never felt starved. I was just like, oh yeah, you're hungry. Don't worry, you're gonna get food one day soon. And you know, I was, I was feeding my friends and, and my kids' friends. And I would look at it and said, that looks yummy, but it's not like I'm never going to be able to eat this meal. I'm, I'm going to be able to eat it in a few days. Whereas before, I would have approached it with lack. Like, oh my gosh, if I don't eat this, everyone's going to eat this and this food is going to be gone. And so, you know, that, that was a really the surprising thing. Like, I'm so proud of myself because um, I got through it so successfully because I know other people who have 
gone on a fast like this successfully is and they completed it but they were ravenous after they finished their um their fast and and ate too much that they became sick after and that didn't happen to me i ate a small meal my first meal after was i had some bone broth i ate um a, a bit of a um course, uh, scone and a, a samosa and some pasta and it wasn't like I ate completely clean after too. It was just that's what the kids were eating and I had some of that and I felt fine. And um, sometimes when people are doing a fast like this and we go through this autophagy process, some people have so much toxins in their body that they start to release it and then they could have this toxic headache or toxic symptoms. Um, but I didn't have any of that. So it just meant that I was, I didn't have that much to cleanse. In fact, I th I don't think I really lost weight. I would I didn't weigh myself before or after, um, because I wasn't trying to lose weight. And my friends were like, "No, for sure, you would have lost five to ten pounds going on a five day fast." And I said, "Trust me, with my height of five three, if I lost five to ten pounds, it would make a really really big difference on my body." And I would know. And I I had before and after pictures. I looked exactly the same, which meant that I wasn't starving. And I didn't lose that much because I didn't have that much to lose. I didn't have that much toxins or fat to lose. So I held on to it. Um, and I also didn't drink that much water. And so maybe I retained some water and that's why I didn't lose any pounds. Um, but anyway, so that's my experience with the fast. And I definitely don't recommend it for everybody. I recommend it for... Um, I, what I would recommend for you is to explore more your relationship with your belly and how much you love yourself and how much of a dialogue, an ongoing dialogue with you have with your belly. Do you talk to your belly with love and comfort? Do you reassure your belly when it tells you stuff? Do you ignore it? So if it, if, if it, eat, if you eat something and you become bloated, do you get mad at your belly or do you rub it and try to calm it down and try to understand why you got bloated? Or, and look at how much you love your belly in terms of self-love. Ask yourself how full you are with life in your, the relationships you have in your life, in the environment you have, in the profession or career you have. And, and have that, that dialogue with your soul. Because if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I believe that our belly is the home of our soul, right? So when you are in constant communication with who you are and yourself and you love yourself, with no conditions, unconditional love, then you can get through um, this sort of thing, this challenge, um, and you'll get stronger and become stronger for it. So I recommend that you you start with that, having this ongoing relationship with your belly, learn to love your belly exactly where you are right now. And then um, if you were to try a fast, start with intermittent fasting, maybe go from um, intermittent fasting is when you go certain hours without food. So um, eat your last meal, be done by six and don't eat again till, well, technically, if you don't eat again till next morning, you're eating breakfast, you're breaking your fast. And some people can start with, if you normally do 10 hours of fasting, then stretch it to two hours and see how you are and just test and just constantly observe and where you are before you expand the hours of your fast. So I'm not here to recommend that you do a fast. I'm here to say time to love your belly, time to improve that relationship with yourself and watch how your belly will respond to you in return. So I'm excited. Um, share with me in your comments how you do or what you think of this video. If you try to fast, what the results were and what your next steps would be if you were to approach you know, how you would have a, relation, a better relationship with your belly. I would love to know in the comments.